Hi guys, this is Jenny Lyles and this is Out of My Mind. We're going to talk today about the idea that the word no is a complete sentence when followed by a period or an exclamation point. And what we are going to do is discuss first why and how to say no if you are setting a boundary and second how to respect other people's boundaries and we're going to go a little deeper than that afterwards. So first, the first question you need to ask yourself when somebody's asked you to do something that might be something that involves a boundary is, can I do that and do I want to do that? Whatever the thing is, you know. So somebody asks you, hey, can I borrow five bucks? Can you do that? Do you have five bucks? Possibly. Do you want to do it? It depends on whether this person is reliable and you believe that they'll pay you back in one way or another, right? So you're going to say no if you don't feel completely comfortable lending this person money. The second thing you want to do is ask yourself, will I resent this person if I do the thing they're asking? And if the answer to that is yes, you're probably going to want to avoid doing the thing they're asking you to do. For instance, let's say a friend calls you and you were in the middle of a really good book that you were looking forward to and they say, you need to come with me. I'm going to go dancing tonight and I really need somebody to hang out with. Now, if you're perfectly okay with setting down that book and running off with your friend, then you're probably not going to resent them and go ahead, go have fun. But if you are really, really tight for time, and this is going to be your only reading time, and this is something really important to you, you may not want to give in because you're likely to be angry at your friend for something that you gave in to that really wasn't their fault. The last question is, will I like myself if I say yes, and will I like myself if I say no? Now, if the answer to one of those is, uh, if the answer to that is that, you won't like yourself if you say yes or no, then you go the other way. Like if you won't like yourself if you don't go dancing with your friend because you know that they're very, very shy and they finally gotten up the courage to do this and you're going to, even if you're a little bit resentful, want to help your friend with the social shyness of theirs, then you might want to go ahead and go. So those are kind of four considerations you want to look at before deciding to say yes. Can I do this thing and do I want to do it? Will I resent the person who's asking me to do it if I do the thing? Uh, will, I, will I like myself? Oh, and finally, will it work toward the goal of mine? I almost forgot to tell you that. Sorry about that. Let's say that um, one of my goals is being kinder to friends because sometimes I'm a little selfish. So if my friend asked me to go dancing and I don't really have anything in the way of going dancing but I don't particularly want to go, I'm probably going to want to go simply because it's something that um, I'm working towards a goal. Now again, if it's not towards one of your goals, say no. It's okay. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about respecting other people's goes. The first thing is that you need to respect another person's no, even if it inconveniences you, hurts your feelings, or makes you change your plans. So, even if it you, gives you a bad case of the sads or the angries, um, it's still that person's time, it's still that person's choice. They can decide not to uh, do the thing and they can do that and you have to respect that. Uh, the second thing is don't ask them why uh, or in any case don't ask them more than once. They don't have to tell you. It's, there's no obligation to tell, you, to tell you why they said no just like there's no obligation for you to tell other people why they say no. And the reason for that is because no is, like I said, a complete sentence and we want to people to feel free to say no and not have to justify it every single time they say no. The next thing you're going to want to look at is whether you are thinking, well, gee, if they don't do what I want them to do, they're crossing my boundaries. Um, sorry, it does not work that way. 
your boundary is where you say no. Their boundary is where they say no. You wanting them to do something is not a boundary. It is a desire, a want, a need. Therefore, it is not a boundary crossing for somebody to say, no, I'm not going to go out with you. I had a wonderful first date, but I've realized that I'm really not in the dating game or whatever. So it is. they don't owe you an op. Uh, any kind of explanation and you shouldn't be hounding them for one. Finally, your feelings, your wants and needs do not create a an obligation. And this kind of goes back to that first part is that, you know, a no is a complete sentence. An obligation to somebody is a legal issue, like if you have a contract with them or it is if you have a child and they are dependent on you or an elder who is dependent on you, then you may have a legal issue where you're obligated to somebody. Otherwise, you're not obligated. And I want you to hear that again. You are not obligated. Just because you went on one date doesn't mean you need to go on another. Just because somebody bought you a drink doesn't mean you need to buy uh, accept a second one. Just because... Uh, somebody offered you a job doesn't mean you have to take it. All those things are things that you can choose to do or not to do. The next thing I want to talk about is what do we do and how do we tell when people are crossing our boundaries deliberately. And sometimes we know what that looks like and sometimes we don't. So let me talk a little bit about what it looks like. Somebody who um, is deliberately crossing your boundary is going to keep trying to get you to say yes after you say no. So after you've said no, it'll start with a little bit of whining and coddling. Oh, come on. Might even go to threatening. If you don't do this thing, I'm going to be mad at you. I'm going to treat you badly. I'm going to treat, give you the silent treatment. I'm going to walk away. I'm going to end the relationship. There's going to be a bunch of threatening going on if they're trying to get you to change your no to a yes. Um, they're also going to demand explanations, and I'm not talking about just, hey, can you let me know why this isn't working just once? This is somebody who says, why, 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 just like a two-year-old. You know, two-year-olds are pretty much sociopaths at heart, so, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty unsurprising that some of their behaviors are very close to abusive behaviors. One of our big jobs as an adult is to socialize our children out of those tendencies. So we also are going to want to watch for somebody who's trying to guilt us or trick us into a yes. If you don't do the thing, I'm going to be miserable. If you don't do the thing, I'm going to be sad. If you don't do the thing, this bad thing's going to happen to you that isn't really going to happen to you. Um, a very common abuse tactic is to say, is if you don't do the thing, I'm going to kill myself. Or if you leave me, I'm going to kill myself. Now, if somebody pulls that one on you, there's a very specific thing you do. You tell them that they have two choices. They can either go and turn themselves into a hospital right away and go to the emergency room and be evaluated for suicidal ideation, or you will call a family member, a friend, or the police to do a well check on this person because it is not your responsibility to keep them alive. It is not your responsibility to keep them safe, but you want to be able to make sure you do the bare minimum for that person anyway. Also, when somebody starts saying, you owe me, I did that one thing 50,000 years ago, and therefore you owe me in perpetuity, Thank you, Daenerys Targaryen, for that word and re-entering the U.S. English language. So, when you're dealing with your boundaries and other people's boundaries, there's going to be times when you and they are not going to be in the same place. So you're going to have to do the boundary dance. There's going to be times when your needs and their needs don't collide, and you guys are going to have to figure out how to make that work. And this goes for partnerships, this goes for friendships, this goes for work situations. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to negotiate. Okay, well, I really want to do the thing tonight and you really want to do the other thing tomorrow night. How about we take turns? Which night do you want, tonight or tomorrow? And you kind of do that. Or 
you say, you know, I don't really want to do this thing, but that thing is kind of similar to this thing. So how about we try that thing instead and see if that will satisfy what you're wanting to do without crossing my boundary. And the next thing we're going to do is when somebody continually tries to ride our boundaries, and this is pretty common among kids, oh, come on, mom, I want candy, I want candy, I want candy. And you've just told them that, you know, they have to clean their room. And so they're like, I want candy and I want it now. And you tell them, you know, as soon as you're done your room, I'll give you candy. And so they know, no, I'm not going to clean my room. And, I, and you look at them and say, you know, I'm not sure the candy's happening, but your room is still happening because I set a boundary there that your room needed to be done. And you decided that instead of doing it, you were going to challenge me on whether or not I had a strong boundary. And the answer to that is yes, because I'm trying to teach you to be a responsible adult. So when you are done, we can do something else, but you will not be getting candy today. And if they start whining further, they can, you can say, you know, after you're done, you can play quietly, but we won't be playing together because you've again challenged my boundary. In other words, when somebody tries to challenge your boundary, you set it harder and harder instead of softer and softer. And the reason you do that is because the whole point of challenging your boundary is to change your no to a yes. And if they find that they're getting less and less of what they want every time they ask, then they are less likely to keep asking. Finally, if you figure out that you have crossed somebody else's boundary, you're going to want to go back to something we talked about about a week ago called owning, apologizing, and repairing. I really did something I shouldn't have done that kind of crossed your boundary. I'm very sorry that I did it. How can I fix it and repair our relationship? And again, this is a technique that you use for any relationship you want to keep. This can be a partnership. This can be a friendship. This can be a family member. This can be a work relationship. One last tip I'm going to give here, and of course there is always much more detail in the article that accompanies these, but one last tip I'm going to give you is how to have a compassionate boundary setting. Let's say your spouse says, I really, really want to move to Alaska because it sounds wonderful and I would love to have those cold, cold winters. And it's a hard no for you because you just don't tolerate cold at all. Your arthritis acts up and you are just a miserable person in the cold. So you look at your spouse and you say, I am so sorry, honey, that I can't meet your need. I understand how much you feel that you really want to do this. You are welcome to go to, to uh, Alaska on your own but I won't be going with you because it really doesn't meet my needs. And the way you're kind of saying is it's the formula that I just did was something along the lines with you acknowledge their feelings, their thoughts, and their actions. And then you set your boundary again and you use the word and between. Like, I love you. I understand how much you want this and I can't do it with you. Now you noticed I didn't say you can't go because I don't have the right to tell another adult what they can and cannot do. But I can tell them I can't participate. That is perfectly fine. That's it for right now. If you want more, please go to oomm.live or patreon.com backslash j-l-i-l-e-s. And remember that 50% of what I make through this goes to my best friend, Kathy Malone, who is trying to get a heart transplant and needs to raise money for the anti-rejection meds. So I would really appreciate if you donate to my Patreon, and I will talk to you later. Thank you very much.